This is Marina. She works full time as a cloud software consultant. She spends her day reading and writing C Sharp and SQL, meeting with clients and building Salesforce solutions. And as someone who spends up to 10 hours a day sitting at her desk, she thought it was time to upgrade her current setup with things like a high resolution 120 hertz ultra wide monitor with a built in USB hub for accessories like her desktop speakers, light bar and webcam. And of course the desk setup classics, right? Like a standing desk, good cable management and a couple of miscellaneous items with some cool nighttime lighting. By the way, none of the products you see in this video are sponsored. I bought them all with my own money. Now, when we first started this desk setup project, your existing desk setup was okay, right? Like it had the basics, like I think a 27 inch monitor, a decent sized desk, and I guess it kind of got the job done. Yeah, it was a good setup, but it's not as good as what I have now. Yeah, okay, that's a fair <laughs> answer. So first things first, uh, I kind of went all out on this one. Uh, and just completely ripped out and renovated the entire room. So uh, old and dirty carpet, gone, replaced by some hybrid wood flooring, uh, new coat of paint in Marina's favorite color, olive green, uh, new sheer curtains, and also a wooden slat wall. Now, you may have seen me use these panels on my channel in previous videos, uh, and this slat wall is not just for aesthetics. There's a thick felt backing uh, that actually helps quite a lot with reducing echo in the room and deadening her voice during meetings. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I don't know, are you happy with it? Oh yeah, I absolutely love it. It fits my vibe. <laughs> fits your vibe, okay. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to some actual desk specific upgrades. Now, uh, I think when I was talking to you before this video, you said the monitor was probably the most important thing, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I stare at it more than 12 hours a day, so it's very good to have a good monitor for me. Now just FYI for the B-roll shots in this video, I'm making her use my laptop and just putting random apps up there. Uh, obviously because she can't show her laptop because all of her work and client data is a bit confidential. Uh, so the monitor we ended up going with is the U4025QW from Dell. Now it's a 40 inch ultra wide and Marina specifically wanted this type of screen, an ultra wide, uh, because she wants to screen real estate that a dual monitor setup provides, but without that uh, big bezel in the middle. Yeah, so 40 inch ultra wide means I can technically split it into two 20 inch screens. Typically, I have two windows open during the workday, so either Slack or Teams on one side for team or client communication, and then my main work window is open on the other. Also, the U4025QW is curved as well, so the edges are kind of a little bit easier to see and are less distorted than, say, a flat uh, ultra wide. Now, Dell advertises this monitor as a 5K resolution, which is actually a little bit misleading. It's actually a 5K 2K resolution, so 5,120 pixels wide and 2,160 pixels vertically, which is essentially a 4K monitor. Uh, Marina wanted the pixel density of 4K uh, just to ensure UI elements and text remain sharp, even with the huge screen size. You know, she stares at code and flowcharts all day, so that's important. Uh, yes, she is aware there are minor scaling issues with 4K and Mac OS, but the only other alternative is, you know, downgrade to a 1440p ultra wide or go with a 32 inch non ultra wide screen with a 6K resolution like the ASUS ProArt PA32QCV. And I'll link a review to that monitor down below if you're interested. Also the screen of the U4025QW has some other nice upgrades like a 120 Hertz refresh rate, uh, which is nice because that is of course the same refresh rate as the ProMotion screen on MacBook Pros. Just makes cursor movement and scrolling feel a little nicer. Also, I game after work occasionally and the higher refresh rate is really nice for that. The screen is also surprisingly color accurate. So I guess if she ever decides to work for me and edit my videos, just saying. There's also a built-in Thunderbolt 4 hub, just makes it really easy to attach her MacBook with a single cable to charge, uh, output an image to the screen, and also connect to her speakers and webcam and any other accessories she might want to connect. So the obvious advantage to having a dock built into the monitor is that you can just have all the cables nicely plugged in there. They're not hanging out the back, so cable management's really easy, makes it look nice. Uh, and obviously you don't need to go out and buy a separate desktop dock, right? So that's going to save you some money and it's also going to free up some space and reduce clutter on your actual desk. 
There's also a handy little pop down quick access port on the bottom for plugging in USB drives or charging devices. Now, if you'd like to see a full review of that Dell UltraSharp monitor, I'm just gonna tell Marina to start taking notes because I think I've finally convinced her to start her own YouTube channel. So she can talk about her job, so all the coding, all the development, all the stuff that goes into that day-to-day. -day. Uh, and also I think just the technology that she uses, uh, like laptops, which MacBooks work best for her workflow, keyboards, monitors, etc. Um, so if you are interested in that, uh, make sure to check out the link in the description down below. I'll link Marina's channel and go subscribe to her. <laughs> We also decided to go with a monitor arm just to free up more room on the desk, mainly so Marina could push her keyboard out of the way easily and write notes or draw flowcharts on her whiteboard for process building. Now to match the white aesthetic, I bought the Ergotron LX premium monitor arm. Now Ergotron is a premium brand, so it is gonna be a little bit more expensive than the budget options on Amazon, but the trade-off is it has zero wobble, uh, it's super stable and has a good range of motion for adjustments. So Marina can make it higher if she's using the desk while standing or just, you know, pull it closer to her. Now, when it comes to desk choice, you really wanted an L-shaped desk, didn't you? Yes, that was a must have for me because I do a lot of whiteboard work and I love having that extra space so I can turn to the other side and just have my whiteboard, my notebook and just draw some data models on there. Uh, so this desk is from a brand called Vernal. Uh, it was relatively inexpensive. You don't need anything too fancy, to be honest. Uh, the main thing I was looking for is stability when in standing mode, so you don't get a lot of monitor wobble, and this desk did that well. Now, I know some of you are going to be curious as to how Marina managed to land a work from home coding job. And the reality is there's a lot of learning and a lot of grinding that goes into that, right? Yeah, for sure, especially at the start. So what if there was a way to make learning more fun where you didn't want to stop? That is where boot.dev comes in with their interactive and hands-on education platform where you can learn popular languages like Python, SQL, or Go. And big thanks to boot.dev for supporting my work on this channel and sponsoring this part of the video. Join 641,000 other students on boot.dev and learn how to code by building real projects from absolute beginner level all the way to being able to land your first ever programming job. Now the course catalog contains a bunch of different coding courses that you can choose from, and each learning module allows you to earn XP, levels, achievements, and complete quests to get a top spot on the leaderboard. If you get stuck, Boots, a bear wizard, is your personal AI tutor who will ask questions and give you nudges to get you back on track. There's also the boot.dev Discord community to interact with other students. Boot.dev also has a 30 day, no questions asked refund policy. So if you want to kickstart your coding career, check out the link in the description below and use code Liam. Now for speakers, keeping with the white aesthetic, of course, uh, we went with the Audio Engine A2 Plus desktop speakers. Now I like these speakers uh, because they're really simple. They have a built-in DAC, so there's no need to go buy a separate one and have a really complicated speaker setup. Uh, it's literally just a single USB connection that goes out of the left speaker and into a USB port on the Dell ultra wide monitor. Every time she attaches her MacBook to the monitor, boom, she has audio output through the speakers. Audio quality is pretty good too. There are certainly better speaker options, but for the tiny form factor, uh, I think this is perfect for someone doing meetings or just listening to music while working. Uh, otherwise, she does have a pair of Bose noise cancelling headphones too. Now I made sure to get some stands for the speakers off Amazon, just to slightly improve audio quality by isolating the speaker unit from the desk to reduce some vibrations. Uh, and these also serve the purpose of raising and angling the speakers slightly to point directly at Marina's head, which again, just slightly improves audio quality. Now, since Marina often works late and writes at her desk, a monitor light bar is something I thought would come in useful. Uh, it's basically just a lamp that sits on the top of the monitor and illuminates the desk. You've probably seen it before. I've featured it on this channel multiple times over the years. Uh, the advantage of this over just like a normal desktop lamp is the light source is directly in front and above. It doesn't cast shadows when you're writing and it doesn't reflect on the screen either. 
So this is the new screen bar pro from BenQ. It actually fits on the top of this Dell monitor, even though it's a bit of a chunkier ultra wide uh, because it's got a adjustable clamp. And there's also settings on the front that you can change, uh, brightness up and down, color temperature, etc. cetera. Uh, there is a sensor on the front too that allows for auto on and off that turns on when it detects movement in the room and obviously turns off when you leave while also adjusting the brightness and color temperature up and down to suit the room's ambient lighting. So essentially, you never really need to touch any of those buttons on the light bar. And it also just plugs straight into the back of the monitor to give it power. Now, one cool feature of the Screen Bar Pro is that it comes with a webcam mount uh, that you can stick to the top of it. And that allows Marina to place her webcam on top of the Screen Bar, uh, which completely solves the issue of having to place the webcam off to the side like previous versions. Now the webcam is the Insta360 Link. It's 4K, has a pretty large sensor, so image quality is better than what she got on her previous 1080p webcam or her MacBook webcam. There are also other features like autofocus, hand gestures to enable AI tracking or zooming. But to be quite honest with you, I have never used any of that stuff. I think it's kind of a gimmick, like the whole like pinch to zoom, AI tracking, all that kind of stuff. I don't know, have you, ever use that or is that relevant to you at all? No, I haven't really used it. No. no. One thing I will mention though is that this one actually rotates the camera down when not in use. So I guess that's a nice little privacy feature. Now for Marina's keyboard and mouse, funnily enough, she was actually using the setup that I've featured and recommended on my own channel uh, multiple times in the past. It's almost as if you've watched some of my videos, huh? Mm, yeah. So this is the MX Keys keyboard and the MX Master Mouse from Logitech. Now, because hers were quite old and worn, uh, I just gifted her the new and improved versions, the MX Keys S and MX Master 3S in white. They're pretty much the same as the previous versions, just a few minor upgrades, like slightly more quiet clicks, uh, improved sensor on the mouse and Logi Bolt USB receiver, which Marina uses because it's a more stable connection than Bluetooth. Just plugs right into the back of her monitor. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail about these two because they've been around for a while, right? They're classics. Uh, but what do you specifically like about them? I love how quiet they are. So if I'm on a call with someone and I'm typing away or clicking away, they can't hear me. So they can't hear it. Like even though your MacBook microphone is right there and your keyboard's there, it's quiet enough that they can't. It's not yeah. bothersome to them. Exactly, okay. yeah. Uh, it also has great battery life a backlight, USB-C charging, and you can easily switch it between different computers. Uh, now also Marina specifically wanted a full-sized keyboard version uh, because she prefers typing numbers into the number pad and also frequently uses the lock button to lock the screen when away from the computer. Now for the desk mat, we just bought a cheap one off Amazon. Uh, I just don't see the point in spending like a hundred bucks on those fancy like Merino wool felt ones or the, like the crazy ones you see in the desktop setups out there. Um, this cheap one is gonna get the job done. It's basically very similar quality to those super premium expensive ones. Uh, it looks nice and if it gets wrecked or it gets dirty or it gets torn up by a cat or something, uh, just throw it out and get a new one. You're much better off putting that money you would have spent on like a fancy desk mat into a better monitor or a better keyboard or something like that. That goes to the laptop stand too. There's plenty of good quality ones on Amazon. I like this one. It's made all from metal. Uh, it's relatively cheap. There's no wobble, gives you space for storage underneath, etc. Just keep it simple. Now lighting was also really important for Marina too, at least in our initial discussion before we started planning stuff uh, because she will sometimes work until like 10 or 11 p.m when client projects are due the next day, for example. Now I used Philips Hue for most of the lighting in the room. Uh, there's a light strip behind the desk, a play light bar perched on the monitor arm for some background bias lighting, uh, just to reduce eye strain at night. And then Marina has a couple of other lamps all plugged into a Philips Hue smart plug. So she can click a button on her phone or just use voice control to turn on or off all of the lighting instantly. Honestly, it looks really nice and cozy at night. Uh, this is the setup that I recommend for most people as well. It just instantly transforms your room. Uh, I have it in my own desk setup, although I don't think mine looks quite as nice as hers. So let us know what you think about Marina's setup. I think it's pretty functional, like we didn't really waste money or buy useless crap that's just a gimmick and just sits there doing nothing. Like everything has a purpose, it's functional. 
Uh, we used most of the budget and put that towards things that she's interacting with every day and all day, like the monitor, the mouse, the keyboard, etc. So yeah, I think we'll what give it a couple months, see how she goes. We might make some minor tweaks and some changes, and then maybe you can revisit the setup in a couple of months on your own channel. Mm, for sure. Yeah. So again, make sure you guys subscribe to Marina. Thank you so much for being in this video and being the test subject for this desk setup. And I will link her channel down below. So make sure you guys go and say thanks to her and subscribe. No, bye. <laughs>